right, everybody? Day 19 of our every 6 p.m. Pacific broadcast, physical distancing broadcast, encouraging everybody to get outdoors. Today, we're going to show you our permaculture design. And, uh, and then we're also going to do a little tour of the orchard and our very important, most important animal in the orchard, mason bees. Uh, if you don't know what mason bees are, you're going to be amazed. Um, we're just going to take them out of hibernation, or one or well, two of them. Tomorrow, uh, this, yeah, we'll talk about it. Because it's only going to get warm enough tomorrow, really. Uh, but the trees are blossoming, so they need to get pollinated, so we got to get those mason bees going. And then if we have time, we'll head out and uh, plant a potato from an old potato that's sprouting in our new community sidewalk garden. But might not get there. And I'm going to finish up with a song uh, by the composer of Lean on Me, passed away yesterday. Uh, um, of heart uh, condition. So, anyways, um, we're starting right here with um, Asian pear. our one of two Asian pears that survived. I'm not sure what happened to the other one. We're gonna have to order another one. No, we one. planted one. Oh, we did. Okay. Yes, this is the only one that we have. Is this all pollinating? Mm -hmm. or, oh, okay. Yes. So we should be able to get some Asian pears out of there. Yeah, we had a few last year. Yep. Mm -hmm. And right behind the Asian pear uh, is the chicken coop. But between here and the chicken coop. Okay. Um, we've got our old apple tree. That really needs to be uh, taken out. If you have an old apple tree, um, you, might, you really should check with your um, agricultural extension or local uh, department that monitors these things because they can propagate. They can spread diseases. Yeah. And they're diseases that you don't want. And we should have taken it out. It's been here my whole life. It's an old Gravenstein. Um, and so... There's some sentimental yeah. reasons why we have it, but really needs to, it needs to come we out. We basically have to take nylon stockings and wrap around the small little apples that will be developing. Of course, it hasn't even flowered yet uh, in order to keep the... Uh, what, do you know what kind of worms they are that, are, oh, I'm sure it's a, that uh, infest the apples? But anyway, we'll be doing that this year because we didn't take it out because, of course, this year we need as much produce as possible in case we don't have other income. And what do we have uh, growing here? It's an autumn. A lot of olive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you might notice that uh, these are really well established, maybe 70 year old, um, no, I don't think 60 that old. or so 70. Well, they've been here my whole life, and I'm almost 50. So. Yeah, and they were going well when you were a kid, right? Well, I mean, I was little. Okay. Was but yeah, they were, they were going just fine when I was a kid. And right behind Kim is her favorite. This is my favorite. The this early is blue. Early blue. Yep. Yes, and these are our first blueberries to come out. So you can still buy these. We've planted some in our orchard, and they're absolutely wonderful. The taste is exquisite, and they're our first one to come out by a long time. And so if you want to make your harvest super long, plant some early blues in yeah. your yard and once again you can see how massive this creature is and we net this every year so we can keep all the birds and things out of it um, and otherwise it takes <laughs> them a couple of days to get all of them yeah. but otherwise it produces for us for uh, two months it's amazing. it's amazing and the other thing we do leave some space available for the birds to actually get some we want yeah. them to, be able to get some food too now it's a long-term investment though because the small little blueberries you get they don't grow super fast no but, and you'll see wow, when we it's get a out lifetime to our orchard. investment. Mm -hmm. Can I talk about it? Yeah. Oh, your yeah, honeyberry right here? Yeah, yeah we so have two little honeyberries. Really well, of course, honey they get munched by deer, deer so we have to cover them. And so this has been in a couple years now, and this is as big as it is. And you can see right behind, this is its companion, so these two will cross pollinate. And they've made a few berries, but that's about it so far. <laughs> and next, you might notice we had to um, fence a few of these because oh, yeah. the deer are starting to go after them. This is a little weeping mulberry. Um, and so we're hoping to get some fruit off of it this year. But last year we got fruit off of a massive mulberry. It's an Illinois mm -hmm. Everberry. Back. Oh, I need to run over. There. Mm -hmm. There's going to be so many mulberries off of that. I want it to get massive so we can get a ton of fruit. <laughs> They're supposed to grow massive. Right behind here, we um, I, these were actually street tr trees that yes. we had to transplant last year from the street when they were redoing the new sidewalk, permeable sidewalk. Yeah, they gave us like a, I don't know. Oh no! Well, they, they dropped them off. some off. They, they dropped them off and just and we planted them the three years ago. Yes, 
And then we just threw them in. Yep, and then they um, they had to take them out. Oh, but they, and, but they did separate. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. Be covered with flowers. Yeah, and Isn't I love beautiful? crab apples myself. They're really tart. However, this is a native crab apple. However, um, they're really great for pollinating yes. the, our actual yes. apple trees because yes. they have so many flowers. They really help produce more apples on it's our be apple so trees. Beautiful. Yep. Hmm. Okay, let's head over to the porch because. Um, like to uh, take a look at the mason bees and how they help us pollinate. By the way, we just got word today that our friend who, oh yeah, go go put Lily, close the gate, otherwise she'll try. I know she's good, good girl, Lil. Even though she's a half blue tick coon hound and would rather run, 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 till she trees something. Anyways, so the uh, we just got word today that our friend who keeps bees here uh, has them being de delivered on April 18th. And so April 18th, 6 p.m., you will see right over here, underneath, somewhere in here. Somewhere in here. Yeah, over here. Last year was, yeah, we're going to tuck them up under near the tree. Uh, we're going to have our two, I think just two, two hives. hives of honeybees. Different honeybees, we don't know yet which We got kind. some amazing uh, we so honey last, last year. He didn't he lose a, a, quite a bit of them. It was his first year attempting. Yeah, he lost one to the so. varroa mites, but uh -huh. he did give us honey from it. It's fantastic. This tree right here, I'm it's sure your grandmother put it in probably. Yeah. It's a camellia, and mm -hmm. camellia is the genus of the tea plant. So camellia this is sinensis is yep. actually tea. Tea. Mm -hmm. So if you ever, it's actually if you're making a tea, you're actually making an infusion of whatever kind of plant. And tea is actually Camellia yeah. sinensis. This is Camellia, know. Uh, you know, some I other kind of Camellia. <laughs> but it's you can see the leaves. Pinkus. The leaves look just like actual tea leaves because the same pinkus. genus. All right, so we're going to stop right up here on our porch, front porch. We have our mason bee hive sort box. of situation box. Mason and look, you can read the sign, if, but it's backwards for you, I'm it's sure. It's backwards, but I posted okay. this here because when people like UPS and the Postal Service come and they drop off packages and they see these bees flying in and out, I didn't want to scare them, so it just says, these little critters are blue orchard mason bees, one of our native bees. Please enjoy watching them. They will not sting you. And thanks, Blue Sky Farm. Mm -hmm. So, and, and we... Watch it. Is this crooked? A little bit, yes, and we need to cover it with some um, really quarter-inch hardware cloth, so, right? Otherwise, so the birds will here. eat the bees. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, let me set this down. Okay. There's some things to show Get people too. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to start out by showing you guys, or telling you a little bit about an amazing resource that we have, and they're actually a local company. It's called Crown Bees, and so I was attending some of the. Um, Beekeepers Association meetings over at the Washington State University Extension because I was really interested in learning more about bees and it's amazing what honeybees do and we love honey and we would love to have something like that. We would have loved to have done it ourselves. Fortunately, we've got a friend who's going to do it here, but they had a special guest while I was there and the special guest was from Crown Bees and he told us these amazing stories about these just amazing pollinators and I was so inspired because there's a lot of work and a lot of equipment that goes with having honeybees. With mason bees all you need is a little box or a house of some sort. There's a bunch of different kinds that you can use. This is the one that I chose and then you need some holes for them because they're hole nesting bees. So whereas a honeybee would have a hive and it would have honey that would have to defend a mason bee or other native bees, native um, hole dwelling bees like leaf cutter bees, um, they nest in holes, they don't have honey that they have to defend, and so they really don't sting you. They're non-aggressive completely. Now, if you try to smash a female on your fingers, yes, she can give you a sting, but they don't have as much venom as a regular honeybee has, and the males don't sting at all. So you're totally safe around these guys. And I have held them, and I've stood with my nose right here where they fly in and out, and they're absolutely wonderful. Now, and... You're, did you talk about why we want uh, mason bees I'm, as opposed I'm, to honeybees? I'm getting there. For pollination? Awesome. I'm getting there. Okay, I'm cool. on it. Right. I'm on it. So anyway, <laughs> mason bees are super easy. There's not a lot of equipment involved. You need bees, you need tubes, and you need a spot that's safe for them to um, put or, you know, lay their eggs and build their little, their little um, solitary homes. They're native, and so they are used to the temperatures and the plants and everything that's around here. This is where they live, and so this is something that they've evolved to um, adjust to the things that we have. Um, I already talked about the sting. 
beautiful thing about these whole nesting bees is, unlike something like a yellow jacket that could get into your house and chew on your wood, they nest in already existing holes. So they're not going to dig a new hole. They're just going to find a crack and they're going to put their eggs in that. Yeah, so that's really wonderful. Sometimes we don't caulk all the things behind. Uh, let's take a look at that. I'm going to bring oh, yeah, the other one. Uh, just don't yeah, don't caulk all the time behind sure. all of the uh, da, da, da. trim because the mason bees can live in there. Yeah. Um, now, if we do start to get yellow jackets or something in there, we'll then we'll have, to, have that. to close that off. Yep. Yeah, so um, anyway, lost my train of thought, but that's okay. So they're super effective pollinators. So like, can you angle this one mm -hmm. that way? Yeah, that's better. And that one that way. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, super effective pollinators. So if you think about the honeybees that you've seen, um, they, this way a little Mm -hmm. They have um, a wet pollen, so it's something that they could mix with saliva or nectar, and they stick it on their legs in this little, like, I guess it's a pouch or pocket, but anyway, it's stuck to their legs, and then they fly super long distances up to a couple of miles, and so they fly out, they get the things that they need off the plant, they fly back, deliver, fly back out to the plant, get what they need, deliver. They are super efficient in that way. Now, when we do bees again on April 18th, do you think they might at that time be flying? We can show I have no people? idea. Okay, hopefully. No idea we'll in the world. So we'll see. Yeah. Have to be what it's it, been a it, cold, it'll be what it is. Cold night. So anyway, so the mason yeah, bees so. are really amazing because they are they use pollen dry. And so what they do is they fly into your flower and they have these special hairs on their abdomen that actually collects the pollen. And so they dab their belly all over the flower and then they fly off someplace else and they are not just stuck on one single branch really really focused they're a little bit of a meander and so what you'll find is that they are actually really successful cross-pollinators so you know how you need plants of a or two different kinds of say apple trees in order to cross-pollinate so that you can get good fruiting um, that's what they do and they're really successful at it and then the really cool thing is after they get all this cool pollen on their bellies and it is so cute let me tell you when they're flying back in here and you look at them and they've got a belly full of pollen anyway um, they only live, or they only go about 300 feet radius away from this nest. And so they are truly pollinating your yard, which is awesome. Not that honeybees are a problem, they're really awesome too, but your native um, whole nesting yeah. bees are going to be taking care of your yard. And in fact, there was this big international study that they did a couple years back, 2016, and they found that small farms that added pollinators to their farm had a 25% increase in yield. Now, if that doesn't rock, I don't know what does. <laughs> and so they find that about 10 mason bees can pollinate an entire massive apple tree. And it takes a whole lot more honeybees than that. I think it was a thousand. I could be wrong. I'll have to double check that, but way more. So it doesn't take that many bees to pollinate whatever you've got. And if you decide to do the spring mason bees, that's great. And they're going to be alive around four to six weeks. And you store them in such a way that you keep them in the refrigerator with enough humidity. And then you bring them out in the morning when it's warm enough. And then they will hatch out. I'm going to show you. This is so cool. Here are their little cocoons. Dun, dun, dun. Can you see it? And those were inside those tubes. Yeah, these were. Uh, yeah, I'll show you too. I'll show you how it works. So anyway, these are the cocoons, and so what you do is you wait till it's going to be a nice warm morning, and so we happen to have our um, nest box here on the side of the house that will get morning sun. So this is the east side of the house. Sun rises, warms the area, gets the bees out um, super early, and that's another thing about honeybees versus. Um, mason bees and other native bees is that honeybees have a bunch of honey and things like that in the hive and so if it's super windy or super rainy out they don't necessarily have to go out um, as early or as, as diligently as a bee that's only going to live four to six weeks and is doing all of their um, propagation for the next generation um, in one spot as a solitary bee. So they don't have any other hive members to depend on. So they find that they work in higher winds, they work longer in the day, um, definitely harder workers, although I think they have a little more fun doing it. Anyway, <laughs> so once your tubes fill up, what I do is when I put them in the, in the uh, bee box like this, it's nice to stagger them in, in a way so that the bees can tell which hole is actually theirs because they want to go back and forth to that exact hole. So if you come out here and you're naughty and you mix it all up, they're going to be really unhappy about that. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll jab some little sticks in here so that they can fly in and they'll be like, oh, there's the stick, my whole second one from the stick. Or I don't know what they're actually thinking, but they notice that, that difference and so that's how they know where their hole is. So anyway, some of them will stick out, some of them will go in and I leave them there the entire season. 
And then what's really great is you can pull these all down and crown bees actually has another kind of bee. It's called the leaf cutter bee and those come out later in the season. And so you can start your next group of bees, the leaf cutter bees, later and they can just uh, 10 leaf cutter bees can pollinate your 20 by 20 garden. So the so season awesome. is only like six weeks long? The, the uh, bee only basin. lives four to six weeks, but you don't have to take them all out of your refrigerator at the same time. So um, Crown Bees is really cool. You can sign up for their emails and they'll send you an email and they'll tell you, oh, now's the time to start taking out your bees. Oh, you need to take them out by this date because if you don't, they will not have enough food stores left over from the fall in order to survive. So there is actually a cutoff date that you have to have them outside. So really Crown amazing. Bees will give you the step-by-step -step when you can put them back in the refrigerator if you want. Wonderful. Yep, they're wonderful. So or you anyway, can just leave them out here. Some people just leave them out all year long do. and take now, their chances. That is something you can do. You can leave them out the entire season. Now the, the Entire year. The entire year, yeah. So um, by the time fall occurs with mason bees, they have actually... Um, so, so anyway, what happens is the female goes into the hole, brings in a blob of clayey mud, and um, forms a little cap. And then she will go in and she will put pollen. It's like a pollen and a nectar pad. And then when she has enough of that, then she'll lay her egg and then she will bring in more mud and seal that in. So you'll have a series of little cocoons all the way down your tube with mud in between each one. And what she does is she lays the girls in the back and the boys in the front. You can tell the difference cocoon wise because the girl cocoon is bigger and the girl bee is actually bigger than the male. That's how, one, of the, one of the ways you can tell the difference. And so if you leave your um, bees out over winter, what can happen is there are a couple of different kinds, well actually there's many different kinds of pests and things that can um, cause problems with your bees, um, two of which, oh boy, chalk brood I think is one of them, and the other one that I have had some of is a um, pollen mite. And so what will happen is Mites are naturally in the environment and they're on the flowers and in the pollen and whatever and they ride around on the bees and they get transferred here and there and it's not necessarily a big deal other than if they get some of them in here they can take over one of the chambers and what they'll do is they'll eat all the pollen so that the baby or, you know the baby bee dies and then they will take over that chamber and keep growing and multiplying and whatever and so then when a bee further down as soon as you know spring hits and they start hatching out the boys hatch out first and take off they get, get going and doing their thing and then the girls start hatching out and as the bees that are further back start crawling through the tube to get out they crawl through these mites and they increase the number of the mites that are in the system so if you leave your bees out you have more of a chance of having things like that spreading in the population and spreading on your farm or in your yard now if you take them out there are ways that you can actually clean the cocoons they're totally waterproof and um, clean them off so that when you store them they don't have any of those mites then when you put them out the next season you're starting from a better position than if you hadn't done that so anyway here's what it looks like am I still good to go oh, you just for a minute just for one minute well go ahead yeah holy mackerel we we'll have to extend part two tomorrow on the um, orchard and permaculture design and garden installation oh, but that's okay. okay all right well anyway this is super cool so with with crown bees you can actually buy these from a couple other um, companies and things I just love crown bees because this is the first place I heard about it they were really cool um, and they have this great book called Mason Bee Revolution, which I know is backwards. Mason Bee Revolution is just awesome. It gives you all the details about Mason Bees. And even though you can find a ton of information online, there's something super cool about having a book in your hand that tells you all the things that you need. Because sometimes online, you're finding out who knows what from who knows who. These guys and gals know what they're talking about. A really good Mason Bee Revolution. So, crown bees, don't forget. So, anyway, you can get... Oh, I didn't bring it out. Anyway, there's a bunch of different methods of creating holes for your bees. So you can get a block of wood, you can drill holes into the block of the wood, and they will use that. Your mason bees need an 8 millimeter hole, your leaf cutters need a 6 millimeter hole. It's great for one season, but after that, there's no way for you to clean out any of the goo that's in there. I guess you could do it with a wire brush or something like that, but it's harder to do it. So generally, wood blocks with holes drilled into them are considered one season use. Now, you can get blocks where they... Um, drill the holes in it and then they cut it right in the middle so you basically take each piece each piece looks I don't know how to do this each piece looks like <laughs> this is really bad a U and an upside down U stuck together okay so then you put them all together all your pieces so you have a whole bunch of holes with the crease in the middle and then you rubber band the whole thing so then you can actually pop those apart and clean them out now 
that's kind of easy. I, when I did that, I did that my first year, I had problems with those little black ants. Oh, that was a bummer because they would go in and eat uh, predators and little larvae and oh, it was just not good. So that didn't work for me. Now, I assume that you could put some of these tubes in there also, but I haven't done that because what I did is I got these really cool cardboard tubes. If you don't have the inserts, you can just use the cardboard tubes, but then they're one use only because you have to peel them open to get your cocoon out. But if you get the inserts, so great. You can use your cardboard year after year. You pull out your insert, and then you just, you, oh, you guys can see. There's mud in the end. Isn't that awesome? That's her mud, clayey mud. If you don't have any good clayey mud in your yard, crown bees will actually sell you mud that you can mix up and put near the hive. And the bees will use it. Fortunately, they really like one of those mounds out there in our orchard. So anyway, then it's sort of like Christmas time or your birthday where you have a whole bunch of different presents and you don't know what's in them. So, Desmond, could you do me a huge favor and mm -hmm. just hold the plate yeah. right there? So anyway, you just start unpeeling it and so the mud cap falls out. And there's nothing for a little bit. Like I said, you never know what you're going to find. So you unpeel it and dun dun dun. Uh -huh. My first cocoon. And what's really cool, up close. I'm going to get it up close. Yep. Oops, let me hold it top and bottom. If you squeeze, by the way, it'll go zzz and buzz. So it'll start. You just know that. So if you look at it, you see there's a bunch of, bunch of that stuff. It's hard to get that in focus because it's focusing on me. Yeah, okay. Let's see if we can get it on your camera. There you go. Close. There's a bunch of brown stuff on there. Oh, Melina and Diane. Oh my gosh, look at everybody. Anyway, so this brown stuff on here is so cool. This is actually bee poop. It's called frass. And so usually when I pull my cocoons out, I will just kind of scrape that off of there. And then you want to look and see if you've got any of those pollen mites on it. And if you do, there's a couple different methods. Somebody said that you could stick it in a container with sand and shake it around. And I found that the mites didn't all come off. And they said, you know, you can leave some of the mites on there. It's not like the end of the world because they're in the natural environment. But I didn't want mites on mine. So anyway, you can stick them in water. And because they're waterproof, no problem. Look, there's cocoon number two. We're having luck so far. I was kind of actually hoping I'd have a pollen mite one to show you guys and gals, all y'all. Nope, just got a lot of frass. This one was a poopy one. Well, you never know. Mm -hmm. You know, this was a great tube. Yeah, a good tube. Very good tube. There's something else I was going to say about bees that was really cool. Oh. Well, that's okay. We. Um, oh, that's the end of it. That's the oh, end of our go. tube. Oh, so yes, this is what I was going to show you. Tips. So, oh, yeah, you got to be careful of those little crazy critters. Yeah. We have a little wren that likes to, for some unknown reason, not really likes to sleep up in here sometimes and so when I open up my cocoons in the morning and I put them out and I want the bees to come out I dump them on just a little lid or a tray just like this you can put that down and then I slip it up here now one time I had put that up there and I left it alone and the cocoons will hatch out in due time. They don't all come out exactly on one day. It can take them a couple days to all hatch out. And that bird would go up there and eat my cocoons. And so one time I lost every single cocoon, but now I have hardware cloth. And so what I'll do is I will actually bend this around and I'll put it up there to block anything from going in and eating my cocoons. So, so half inch hardware cloth is the right one to get because um, the bees need to be able to go in and through so, no, oh. it's not. So ha I, I can, you can use half inch to block the top, oh, the top because the bee can actually get out through that. Um, but if you're going to put it down here at all, you're going to need at least three quarter inch um, in order to give the bees enough room to fly in and out. Um, there was something else I was going to say. Oh, and it's really cool. When they first hatch out, they climb. They, you can hear them. It sounds like this little crunching, crunch, crunch, crunch. Their little cocoons are very crispy sounding. Crunch, 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 and you can hear them buzzing and everything, and then they dig a little hole. That is so fun to watch them. It's like, you know, birth happening. But what they do, before they start flying, you can see this is the lid I used last year. Before they start flying, they do this little poo squirt on the edge of where they are. I know, I know, I'm just showing you all the cool so things exciting. about bees. So cool. Um, anyway, so um, I expect that you'll get a little bit a little bit of that. Actually, I'm not going to put that up there because I'm not going to put them out tonight. Um, it's going to be freezing tonight. Maybe yes, even. I know. It's just a little but bit too But the cold weather is getting so much better in the next few days here, fortunately. Is there anything else I was going to say about them? Well, we're going to have to cut it uh, short. We can come back and do um, see them, hopefully, on April 18th in action oh, yeah. while we do the honeybee oh. um, day. The other thing I was going to say is this thing I will fill completely up because you will not only have the bees that you release, 
other mason bees are out there flying around and so they will come and they will utilize your um, bee house as well and so um, I guess you know if you have any other questions email or not email post them yeah post them, post them right um, preview them to, for tomorrow <laughs> we are going to I'm gonna get my better map than this but our permaculture design map uh, for Blue Sky Farm here and how we wanted to are trying to create a food forest and um, at, I'm going to turn the camera so you can see out front here is our orchard. Um, we wanted to, and we have a lot of work to do uh, because we didn't do any in the fall or the winter of weeding and everything. But um, you can see the pears are in bloom on the right, the apricots right in front. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, that's what we're going to go out there and do tomorrow and hopefully also install our community sidewalk garden out there by the sidewalk. Um, but I think uh, since we're turned into mostly mason bees today, why don't we call it a day, save that for tomorrow, okay. and I'll finish up with a song. And if, um, let's see. Oh, you, want, you want to sit in the chair? Diana put a poo squirt before they fly. Makes sense. So funny. <laughs> I know. I would do that before <laughs> I flew for the first time. Can I'm you sure. um, work the cameras and I'll try to uh, just sit here and... Do you, you, by work the cameras? Yeah, I just have mean... it so that it, they're pointing down a little. Oh, that's good enough. Good enough? And can you um, hold this in case I, I can't, I can't imagine forgetting the words to lean on me. But this is by Bill uh, Withers, and he passed away yesterday, uh, one of the great um, American songwriters. Uh, he, I think he was 81, and he passed away of some heart conditions. Um, sing it if you know it. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, I forgot. I didn't practice. <laughs> there we go. Sometime in our lives, we all have pain, we all have sorrow.
Well, everybody, thank you so much. We're going to uh, continue, as I mentioned, tomorrow. Now, this week is going to be the last week I'm going to uh, broadcast directly to my personal Facebook page. And we're only going to broadcast, I think, sometime starting later next week, only to the Wolf Camp and Conservation College Facebook page and also, hopefully, to YouTube. I really need everybody to go to YouTube and click subscribe on our YouTube um, Wolf Camp and the Conservation College YouTube channel, which is YouTube dot com slash wolf camp college we need a thousand subscribers we're only at 440 uh -oh. yeah <laughs> in order to broadcast directly to, from our phones um because we want to go out wildlife tracking. tracking as soon as possible it looks like maybe we're going to bump it to monday now um oh the weather will be better mm -hmm. the weather's be going to be amazing and the tracks will be incredible and the light angle would be amazing for looking at the tracks um and um in preparation for putting together our Wolf Journey Earth Conservation course, uh, it's the old vintage curriculum of field exercises that we're going to put together, put out on the website for people to be able to get into their backyards or out on their porch and do a field exercise, um, really getting yourself in touch deeper with nature, understanding nature. and. Um, Otherwise, if you love gardening, go out and do that. Increase your food and financial security for the year. And stay healthy. Get outside as much as you can. And we want to thank you so much. Uh, and be well. So, yeah, see you tomorrow.